Today, I'm excited to share with you guys what I consider the proper way to actually onboard your customers, right? We're going to use a combination of forms and Power Automate to really upgrade that experience for you. A little bit about me first before we get started. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Mary Myers. That's my son there in the picture. I'm super obsessed with him. So if you follow me on any social media, you'll understand that that's a major thing. I currently live in Bradenton, Florida. I love the weather. I can't complain. Most of my free time that's not spent, you know, in the tech community is either going to be on the football field or playing golf. I've been in the tech industry only for four years, and I like to kind of point that out because for anyone else that's on this call that's really be really new in their journey, they don't come from a tech industry or background and you're wondering, do I have a space here? You do, I promise you do. If I can do it, you can do it as well. So that's what I'd like to share. What I'm currently doing, so I run my own company. Uh, I like to say that I'm a product of the community, showing up to different community calls and learning and growing. I've actually been able to start my own business where I help small businesses use the Power Platform where we create apps to digitalize their experience. So this customer onboarding is, is what I use a lot of times and see a lot of really happy customers with it. So I want to make sure that I I shared it with everyone else. And of course, I just really love working with SMBs. It's one of my passions. All right. So I don't ever like to make assumptions, right? Maybe we know what a what customer onboarding is, or maybe we don't. So I figured I would just kind of break it down real quick, right? So customer onboarding, that's whenever you're taking the customer, right? We're past the sales process. Um, they've already agreed to buy our product or service, whatever, right? But but we still have to collect payment. We have to get them into our system, right? It doesn't just stop there just because they said that they're excited. This is really where the work begins. It's our opportunity to really shine as a company, right? To say that the buck doesn't just stop at the sales. Because I don't know about y'all, but the worst thing is, is when in your sales department really oversells or even is your, your customer, right? And your sales guy tells you one thing or your salesperson tells you one thing, right? And then you agree to that. And then whenever you get started, it's really not what you expected, right? Everything was nice and professional in the beginning, but now everything starts to fall apart. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand is talking about, and it just really is a messy experience. So it's really important to really make sure that that's really professional all the way through, because I don't know about you, but I just expect excellence from start to finish. And so that's kind of what customer onboarding is, right? It's taking them from, from the sales point to, to into your system to how are they going to work with you on a day-to-day -day standpoint. And that's what customer onboarding is. Every company may have a different experience, but at the end of the day, we need to collect some information from your customer and get it into a system. It's really that easy, but people like to make it a lot more difficult. So some of the problems that we typically see in customer onboarding is that people are using a really inefficient process, right? I've seen all kinds of crazy things, but it usually revolves something around sending an email after somebody said that they were going to, you know, buy something. Then we start with a series of emails. What's your name? Or, you know, you're, maybe you're gathering their name from the from the email, but you still need to clarify like what their address is, because if you just assume that it's the address in the block, right, you maybe you're going to get some wrong information. So it's going to be inaccurate if you make assumptions or maybe you ask the wrong person for the information and they gave you the old billing address and you need the new billing address, right? So you're going to have all these processes, a bunch of emails, or you sent them an email and you ask them five questions, but they only answered three. So you don't have a complete information. You're going to have to go back and email them back and forth. And maybe you got something wrong and crossed over. It's just a really inefficient process. Also, when you need to have complex processes, I'm currently working with a, with a customer that depending on what type of new employee or new customer that they're bringing in, there's a series of different business process events that need to happen. If you're having all of these emails go back and forth and you can't even manage the emails to get the contact information in, what does the rest of your business process look like, right? After they're in the system, you probably need some additional documents from them. Do you need a W-9? Do you need to send them some health insurance information, right? Like this is just the beginning. Do they need training? Do they already have certifications? There's all of these different things that really need to be managed and are really important in getting that person up and going really quickly. But if you can't even get the first part started, 
you can't get the rest of it. So these outdated processes make it really inadequate. And it really causes a lot of issues with your business as well, right? So like I mentioned before, is it's your first interaction with this customer post the sale. It's your opportunity to say, we're a real company or we got you and we tricked you in the sales process. So I always just encourage everyone to decide what type of company they are. But to me, it's a really level set right there for, for you as a business. Also, with all of those inaccuracies, you're really going to have a negative impact on your cash flow. If you don't have the right information, right, to bill your customer, how are you going to get that, right? It's usually going to happen whenever you send the first invoice, you're way past, you know, the 30 days. If you have net 30 days, right, it's probably day 45 and you're like, hey, uh, are you ever going to pay this invoice? And then they're like, oh, I didn't get the invoice. What email address did you send it to, right? And you find out you don't have the right email address because your process was wrong. So now they're thinking that your 30 day billing process starts now. So you really have a really ineffective uh, or a negative impact on your ROI or your cash there. Also, you just don't have the functionality. You don't have the ability. Apparently, I don't have the ability to finish a sentence, but you also don't have the ability to really just um, automate the rest of your process or scale. So it's really important to kind of keep those things in mind. However, you know, I don't really like to just have problems and more of a solution type of person. So that's why I have this solution that I've been working with with many of my customers and want to share with you all as well. It's really just using Microsoft Forms and Power Automate, right? And then you can connect it to any other ERP system. Today, we're going to do a quick look at just throwing it into Dataverse because Dataverse is going to be backed by CRM. Um, or you can make you know any other power app off of it. But what I do on my day to day business and what I have set up because I use Business Central, right, is my ERP system. But you can also connect this to F and O. It doesn't matter, right? Like the the beginning part is agnostic to whatever system you want to connect it to. And since we're using the Power Platform, right, what you're going to connect it to is an endless opportunities. So then what we have from a business success standpoint is you're going to have this really nice, seamless, professional experience from start to finish, right? You're going to know that it's going to continue to automate itself. Your customers are going to see this nice professional experience from the beginning all the way through the end. Whenever you're having these forms, you know, digitalized, it's, it's just more common, especially in this post-COVID era. We're now gathering data in a digital format. You know, we shouldn't be sending, in my opinion, at least, Word file attachments, PDF attachments, right? There's too many other different ways to do it. I see a note here uh, that just came in that says CE, BC, and FNO. What are those? Uh, I would have to have somebody do a fact check on me to see if what we're currently calling the CRM system CE. I think it is, but basically it's just that, you know, repository of where our customers are at. It's a what a lot of customers are using just to track those different things. BC is going to be the acronym for a business central, and that's the small enterprise ERP system. And then FNO is going to be that larger system. These are just additional systems that people are going to load their customers into, right? So third party systems that we attach to. So great. Also, right, so whatever we're doing this, one of the process, one of the good things is, is that you're gonna be able to build your customer base really quickly and you're gonna increase your cash flow. Uh, I'm gonna jump to the demo because I feel like I'm taking up time and I wanna make sure that everyone has enough time. Let me switch screens from what I'm sharing. So I'm gonna show you, we're gonna build it first real quick, or I'm gonna show you how to build it. And then I'm gonna show you kind of how it works. So first we have to log back in. So here we have just a basic form, right? Now, this is what I built out of Microsoft Forms. If you're not familiar with this, it's really easy. You just come in your apps and you'll see it right here and then you can build whatever form you want. So each one of these blanks or each one of these fields will then give you dynamic content on the back side, right? So I just have this form. I've got information that you typically are asking. And again, you can customize this form for whatever your purposes need. That's the really beautiful thing about it, right? And then your customers, they're gonna see something nice and professional like this, right? Where they're gonna enter all of their information. And then that's when we're really going to get to work here. So let's go ahead and just create one from the beginning. 
I'm going to do what's called an automated flow, right? So let's set this up. I know I'm trying to go pretty fast, but let me level set real quick. So you're going to start with a form, which is in here. You can customize these however you want. If you're familiar with forms, this makes sense. If you're not familiar with forms, I highly recommend that you check them out. They're super versatile that you can use in anything, I think, in your experience, right? So check them out first. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and I can help you scale up here really quickly. So you have your form. Then what we're going to do is we're going to build a flow of when a new response is submitted. Now, this is going to be an automated flow because we're looking for whenever a response comes in, we want this to automatically happen. So we'll go ahead and select this and hit create. Now, this is going to give you a drop down menu of all your different forms. Now, if you look here, I I reuse forms all the time, so I have lots of them. Now I happen to know that this new client information one is the one that I have. As you can see here, it even matches that. So it's really nice to, to be able to line that out. Now the next step that I'm going to do is I need to go ahead and get the information from this form, right? Just because it happened doesn't mean we have the information. So I'm just going to go ahead and get the response details and it's super easy because I'm just going to line up this form ID to match this one, right? This happens, so I want the information from that. And then by default, I'm going to grab this ID that came from this unique response. So from here, you can add this information into any system, right? What we'll do for really easy purposes right now is we'll just do Dataverse and I'll do add a new row. I'm simply going to select the account that I want, or I'm sorry, the table that I want. And for our purposes here, I'm just going to use account because that makes the most sense, right? Now, again, if we look at here, I have access to all of these fields, right, to add into my flow. So what we're going to do here, I want to call the account name. We'll just call this the, the company name, right? I'm sorry, the contact name. Then now we have city. I think I've got city in here. Yep. Uh, we got a street address. We got a street address. Zip code. And as you can see here, I'm just lining this out with some information. Let's see what else here. Now, again, because this is in Dataverse, think about this. You could create a table, a custom table for whatever you want and just line out your information. This is a lot of stuff. I'm not going to fill all of this out. We're just going to kind of see what we have here, right? Okay. Now, honestly, that's as simple as a flow that you can that you need to get started with. What I want to do is, well, we'll just do it here. I had a fancy. Well, hold on. Let me get this code. So again, if you've not used forms, they're super easy. <laughs> this is this is how you get a code. OK, y'all go ahead and click this code. Or I'm sorry, if you have your phone, take out your phone and scan this. And what this will allow you to do, this will bring up that Microsoft form. Go ahead and fill out the information, you know, however much you want to fill out. And we're going to see what happens. Okay, I'll go ahead and close this, make the assumption. And what I like to do here, we'll save this again with forms. These are pretty cool. In a second, you'll see. Yep, see the the responses are coming in nicely. Yep, they're coming in. You can see what's cool. Uh, I use this all the time, so it gives me all the different people, right? You can see the different kind of customers and stuff that I work with. But any one of these, you know, forms kind of work like this. So, oh, we've got lots of people here today. So what this is going to show, right? Hopefully it's going to show. Oh, good. I would have been really sad y'all this showed a bunch of fails. So we see a bunch of successes, right? What does that mean? Well, now I don't have this table locked anywhere, basically, or like loaded in an app. But what we do have is if I just come over here to where I have it here in, this is just make, right? Let me show you where we're at. So I'm at make.powerapps.com, right? So our traditional here, and then I'm coming down into here. I'm just going into our tables and I'm taking a look at account, 
right? Just kind of going back to where it was at. And as you can see here, I've got a whole bunch of new people that have been added, 85 additional rows. And this is everyone that is onboarding themselves right now, right? So just imagine that if this was your customer instead. Now, for example, you probably hear all this clinging going on in the background, and that is because I forgot to turn off my personal flow. I'll show you what it's doing in the background. A couple different things. I see, you see here, I've got all of these customer requests. I'm going to have some declining to do later, but that's okay. And what I have, like, this is a simple process, right? A very simple one that we've looked at. But what taking a quick look at something more complex, for example, is what I use in my day to day business. So for me, whenever I have a new customer come in, I want them to sign an MSA. I want to get them into my business central system, right? Because I can't bill them if they're not in there. And I don't want to get, grab all that information later. Again, I want to look like a nice professional business running through all day long. So again, you see, this is the first step of what we had before when a new response is submitted go ahead and get the details and then what i do first here is i send it through an approval process for everyone that's approved you know oops come on if it gets approved i create a record of my business central same thing that we did in dataverse right but for me this makes it more relevant because this is this is my erp system so you can connect this to any erp system or anything that your customer right needs to put it into and then on the other side, I also continue to use that form and I use it to populate a contract, right? And then I save it into SharePoint and convert that to a PDF. Uh, I then save that file and you can even use something like eSignature or you can use Adobe or you can use DocuSign, you know, to, to send that automated contract information to your customer as well. All of that's onboarded and at the end of the day, what that means is that you are saving your customer time and money as they're onboarding new people and you have more time to, uh, to expand and grow your business. So that is my opinion on why you should be using the this type of experience for customer onboarding. Yeah, so I think we're probably at time. Yeah, awesome, Mary. This is really fantastic stuff. I appreciate the simplicity of it and walking through it, making it interactive. That's always fun. Kind of shows firsthand everyone that's attending the ability to see how uh, they're, they're part in it. So thank you very, very much. I appreciate that.